Hey everyone, it's Professor Oates, back with part three of my big Hearthstone Ungoro review thing. Reviewing cards and classes. Uh, these are my opinions, and I didn't watch tons of streamer reviews like I usually do so that my opinions could be my own. So if you disagree with my opinions, that's fine. I am often wrong. But hopefully my perspective on things helps out a little bit. The best thought out opinions are often a team effort, so let's help each other. Uh, in the comments, put your opinions on things, what I did, what you thought, and we'll make better decks for it. Uh, last time, I reviewed Paladin, Priest, and Rogue, and I'm going to move right along to Shaman. First, let's start off with the quest. And compared to, like, gaining an extra turn or throwing down Cycling Raptors, this could be as powerful, but it's not as flashy, you know? Unite the Murlocs! Uh, upon summoning ten Murlocs, your noble goal is rewarded with Megafin. Look at this guy, he's huge. Also, a five mana 8-8, eight eight, again. Battlecry, fill your hand with random Murlocs. And he's a Murloc, if you didn't guess. Now, Murlocs have tons of synergy with one another, so filling your hand with up to, like, 9 or 10 Murlocs if you're about to run out of a hand, that's really good. You are going to have commanding plays on following turns. And uh, summoning 10 Murlocs to complete the quest isn't that terrible, because it's summon, not play. So, uh, call, in, call in the finishers is 4 Murlocs, Finja is usually 3, and Murloc Tidehunter is 2 each. So this quest is really doable. And you don't have to worry about running out of steam with your limited shaman draw and a lot of cheap murlocs because Megafin will give you all the steam you need, baby. It's a shame Finley's heading out because, like, ever since Finley came out, he's been used in aggro decks just because I don't have hunter or warlock hero power, so I'm going to try and get hunter or warlock hero power. Or he's been used as fodder in a curator deck just to get one extra draw, even though he wasn't really that useful in those decks and often got, like, cycled out. Like, he wasn't even run in decks where he was supposed to be run. And now there's a deck that's perfect for him, and he's not in the set anymore. He's even in the card art! Come on! Well, despite losing Finley and everything is awesome, the deck's probably still going to be really good. It will be competing with a lot of strong Shaman options. Uh, most likely Jade Midrange Shaman and Elemental Shaman. And speaking of Elemental Shaman, let's move on to another strong tribe deck, the Elementals, with the Shaman Legendary, Kalimos Primal Lord! Uh, it's an imposing name for an imposing block of danger. This 8-mana 7-7 seven, seven has one of four effects if you have summoned an elemental uh, the previous turn, like you do. Looking at the invocations, looking at the invocations, there we go. You've got uh, Invocation of Air, does three damage to all enemy minions. Invocation of Earth, fill your board with 1-1 one, one elementals, they look really cute. Uh, invocation of Fire, deal six damage to the enemy hero. And Invocation of Water, restore 12 health to your hero. So... I'm assuming you all know why this is broken, but let's talk about why this is broken. Uh, it's not just because any one of the effects on a 7-7 body would be good, because all of the effects on a 7-7 body for 8 would be good. But you get to choose uh, which one you need based on the situation you need it in. And they all cover different situations, so you cover, like, everything. Let's say you're fighting Quest Hunter and they start swarming raptors. Air will remove them. If you're dealing with an empty board, threaten the board with Earth. Uh, fire will help secure lethal sometime, uh, sometimes, and there's a 7-drop elemental in the neutrals that's basically a Firelands portal. And if you do that and this face, you have, like, a surprising amount of burst for a mid-range deck. So you could just get lethal by surprise right there. And uh, against aggro decks, you can put yourself out of lethal range by healing for 12. There are strong elementals that can be played on the previous turn, like the one I was talking about, or the one you can see right here. And uh, the neutral discover an elemental minion can give you more of this guy. So you can play him on turn 8 and then play another one on turn 9. I, I frankly don't feel safe considering all the possibilities. Let's move on. So, uh, Spirit Echo. It's a pretty cool card. Give your minions Death Rattle return this card to your hand. Cost 3. It is comparable to Infest, but much better, I'd say. Since cards you've, like, willingly put in your deck are bound to be better than random beasts. And since Shaman needs a lot of draw... Uh, draw... I think this card will find its place in some deck lists. It works well in tribe decks like Elementals or Murlocs, and it specifically works terribly in Jade Shaman, because if you put Jade uh, Golems into your hand, they're basically worthless cards, constructed-wise. So, uh, you know Blizzard did it on purpose. That was really smooth. And, yeah, I like it. It's a cool card. Next up, Stone Sentinel. Uh, another Elemental, this time costing 7. Wink, wink. Curve, curve, curve. Uh, it is normally a 7-mana 4-4, which is awful. But it summons two 2-3 two, taunts that look like this if you played an elemental the previous turn. With the taunts, that is an 8-10 worth of stats on turn 7, which is great. Albeit, it is a range to be very vulnerable on Flamestrike. 
uh, versus Flame Strike. But let, let's put it this way. You play this card, summon the Taunts, and they spend their turn up using Flame Strike. They had better be prepared for Kalamos on turn 8, who will fill the board back up with uh, Invocation of Earth, little 1-1s. One and they just used up their AoE. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Joke's on you. Plus, you can play Fire Elemental on turn 6, this thing on turn 7, and Kalimos on turn 8, making for a very terrifying curve. And if you thought that was strong, well, what if it all costed one less? Well, it can, with Fire Plume... Well, it can costed... Sorry, grammar. But it can, with Fire Plume Harbinger, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one elemental. Battlecry, reduce the cost of elementals in your hand by 1. Now, this isn't amazing on turn 2, to be fair. The stats aren't good at all, and uh, the effect won't hit all your large elementals, which I really doubt you're going to keep in the mulligan. But on turn 4 or 5, when you've gotten some cards in your hand, you play this, and next turn, the Wonder Curve begins. This card has a lot of potential, and I expect this to be run 2 of in most elemental shamans. It's, it's really, 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 really good. So uh, next, Volcano, which is a replacement for Elemental Destruction, which is leaving this set. It's a shame, because I kind of like it. Uh, costing 5 with 2 Overload, this spell deals 15 damage randomly split among all minions. Compared to Overload, uh, compared to Overload, compared to, uh, Elemental Destruction, it feels a little bit underwhelming. You can't really develop as much on the same turn, and against really large boards, 15 damage doesn't have the same oomph as 4 to 5 to every minion, plus spell damage, plus whatever the... It's good. I mean, Elemental Destruction is good. This is less good but it is only really usable in control decks. Uh, what we've seen previously, like from the above cards, are for mid-range or aggro or... This won't really work with that. It'll clear your own board. It's better if you're behind on board and you're trying to control the board with spells, waiting for some big combo or like some Earth Elemental Reincarnate Jazz, which is straight-up Control Shaman. And Control Shaman needed some love. And Elemental Destruction is one of Control Shaman's like best tools, and it's going away. So I'm glad this card exists, but I think they could have made it a little bit better. Uh, something you won't run Elemental in is a uh, Murloc Shaman, and that likes Primal Fin Totem. So yeah, Primal Fin Totem is a 0-3 Totem, cost 2. At the end of your turn, summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc, and this will happen at the end of each turn. This is a pretty neat card that, if protected, can quickly uh, complete the Shaman quest, because each Murloc is one tick closer to Mega Fin. Uh, Bilefin Tidehunter, despite summoning fewer Murlocs than its buddy Murloc Tidehunter, can uh, keep the totem alive a little bit longer to make more Murlocs. And it demands face deck spend 3 damage to remove it. So it's okay. I see it in Murloc Shaman. Not sure about 2 copies. In other decks, it basically doesn't exist. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Next up is Air Elemental, a 1 cost 2, 2 1 elemental that cannot be targeted by spells and hero powers. It's okay. But compared to Shaman's other elementals, it's definitely less powerful. Sure, it can't be pinged by Mage, but few other spells really get value on a 2-1. Like, no one would willingly Frostbolt this, even if they could. So, uh, being immune to those doesn't really do too much. Plus, despite setting up elementals the following turn, on turn 1 there's not really that much to set up. Elemental Shaman, as you saw, is like that 5, 6, 7, 8 kind of thing. So, yeah. It's still a horrible top deck, like most other tiny minions. So, uh, it's okay. It might be included in Elemental Shaman, but it's nowhere near as good as the uh, Shaman's old one-drop, Tunnel Trog. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Next up is an Elemental I really like, Hot Spring Guardian, a 3-cost 2-4 taunt that restores 3 health. It can stop 7 damage from aggro decks, like by itself, for 3 mana. That's really, really good. And it can heal your large mid-game Elementals to make a few extra trades. It's a better Earthen Ring Farseer in basically every way. There's not much more to say about it. It's really good. It'll help shut down aggro as Shaman builds up their big Kalimos curve. Uh, finally, Tidal Surge. Yet another tool against aggro. This 4-cost spell deals 4 damage to a minion and restores 4 health to your hero. Seems a little bit underwhelming, because it is. But if you need more healing, sure. Healing Wave, I uh, healing wave is heading to wild, so this is a thoughtful gesture to control Shaman. But that might be the extent of, extent of it. Just a gesture. So, uh... Final thoughts on Shaman. Well, Jade Shaman is losing Brand Bronzebeard, and Shaman in general lost their amazing early game, sta game staples of Tunnel Trog and Totem Golem, and, element, uh, and Control Shaman, which you didn't see that often, lost Elemental Destruction. But Jade Shaman might still be powerful. They didn't lose that much. Well, yeah, they kind of did. 
You can tell Blizzard was worried about Jade Shaman because they literally added nothing that helps it. They made all the good new class cards archetype specific to Elementals and Murlocs. And that's where Shaman's going to head, in my opinion. Both are going to be solid decks, but have the potential to dominate the latter. Elemental Shaman especially. Kalimos is just so powerful. And if Shaman gets the Dream Curve, it seems pretty hard to stop. Okay, next up is Warlock. Let's start with the quest, Lakari Sacrifice. Uh, quest, discard six cards. And you are rewarded with Nether Portal, a five mana spell that gives you a permanent portal on the board. And at the end of each turn, summon two 3-2 imps. Obviously, this quest is catered towards discard lock. And multiple existing cards like Soulfire and Doomguard, as well as new cards, have very obvious synergy with this quest. The turn you play it won't be turn five. Discarding six cards seems nearly impossible by then. But whenever you do get your portal, it's five mana for six four of stats. Which isn't great, but it isn't bad either, considering you get those stats every turn for free until the game's over. Even, the imp even if the imps can be cl cleared by two damage spread spells, they will get out of hand eventually. And, uh... This fixes a major problem with Zulok, only having strong board presence early in the game, and then you need to draw into a bunch of small minions, and you waste mana each turn, and... Well, yeah, you don't have to do that anymore, because you get three twos, all the time! In addition, demon buffing cards will consistently have targets on the board to boost. That might be important, but it probably won't be. Uh, it's a good quest, it might prompt slower discard lock variants too, so uh, that's fun. Next, the legendary minion, Clutch Mother Zavas. Uh, two mana, two two beast. Beast? Okay. Uh, whenever you discard this, give it plus two plus two and return it to your hand. Beast is a little strange, but okay. And the fact that she keeps coming back buffed is not just good for the eventual huge minion you'll play, but she also gives you consistent discard fodder. Like, she is the only card in this game that is not actually discarded when discarded. Even Silverware Golem leaves the hand to go to the field. But she'll come back. You will continuously use discard effects because you have something to discard, namely her. She seems strong enough if drawn early to be a powerhouse for a very, very low cost. I could see 2 mana 10 10s, 2 mana 8 8s, and as a top deck later, she is awful. A 2 mana 2 2 isn't really that bad stat wise, but any 2 mana 2 2 would be a bad top deck except for Dark Peddler, which is sadly leaving. It's an auto include. This card is an auto include for any discard deck. She might randomly win you a free game but she is significantly worse the later you draw her. Next up, skipping ahead to another discard synergy mission uh, minion, we have Cruel Dinomancer, a 6 mana 5-5. Five, five. Death Rattle, summon a random minion you discarded this game. I don't know if this counts for Silverware Golem or the many sheddings of Clutch Mother Zavas, but on average, this card should be pretty good, as it gives some slight silver lining to tragically discarding your Doomguard. Death Rattle is a little bit slow, but Warlock isn't getting many early game cards this expansion, so this kind of fits that trend. It'll most likely see play in slower variants of Disco Lock, and it probably won't be seen in more traditional aggro builds. Finishing off the discard synergy, we have Lakari Fellhound, a 4 mana 3 8 demon dog with taunt. Battlecry, discard 2 random cards. Uh, 3 8 is a really powerful stat line that we haven't seen much of, especially for a 4 cost minion, and taunt with that, taunt with that much health really shuts down aggro decks. The demon tag means that a single buff can turn this card into a nightmare for the opponents as well. It's also very good at completing the Warlock quest, getting a third of the way there by itself. They're good dogs, Brent. And uh, the rest of the cards are not discard related, but they're all pretty creative, starting with Blood Bloom. Blood Bloom. Your next spell this turn costs health instead of mana. A uh, cheaper Chogal. This spell costs two mana. He costed more than that. Uh, your next spell... Yeah. Well, my first thought was like, OMG, turn 2 Doom. But after I after I got a little less sarcastic, my second thought was that this card is pretty bad. It is the same problem as Chogal. A lot of spells in Warlock aren't good enough to merit this effect. Adding to that, even fewer spells you would want to play early. Uh, example being Siphon Soul. That's a pretty cool card with Chogal. Terrible on early turns with Bloom. Like, who are you going to Siphon Soul? Bane of Doom and the new Feeding Time, which you can see right here, would be a pretty cool thing with this card. You get to remove a minion, you get to, you know, develop at the same time. Only costs two cards, two mana, and five health to do so. And with Reno Jackson leaving, health is kind of important. So, like, that is more costly than you'd think. I don't like it, but someone will find tricks with these cards. Most likely with Bane of Doom or Feeding Time. So, uh, next up is Chitter Chittering Tunneler. 
And Chittering Tunneler is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three beast. More beasts. Battlecry, discover a spell. Deal damage to your hero equal to its cost. This is a pretty nifty effect, but unlike other discovers, taking a high-cost, high-value card takes away a lot of health, so you have to micromanage not dying when making your discover decision. This makes it a little bit worse than other discover effects, but 3-3 three, three of stats and a card draw still isn't bad. Forbidden Ritual and Soulfire will be good draws regardless, and with Imp Gang Boss leaving, there is opening for 3 mana cards. He's kind of like a little bit larger of a Dark Peddler, so he fills that void too. I mean, he's an okay card. You might see him. Maybe. Now, Corrupting Mist is next, and that's a full board corruption. For 2 mana, every minion currently on the board is corrupted. Destroy them at the start of your next turn. It is similar to Doomsayer, but it is both less powerful and harder to disrupt, so there's some pluses and minuses. You can play minions after playing this spell, but their corrupted minions have the ability to trade with your non-corrupted minions. The big upside to this is that you can use this on boards that threaten 7 plus damage, and you won't have a dead doomsayer. But it does mean you will be taking 7 plus face damage, and they get the summon stuff, which you'll have to deal with next turn. It's interesting, but I feel it's overall worse than doomsayer, and I don't even know if it's good enough to run constructed. Now, the next spell, which I alluded to, Feeding Time, uh, it's similar to an existing card, a card that's been gone for a while. I forget which streamer suggested it, but his ideal patch for Implosion back in the day was to balance out the card's RNG, because it did between 2 to 4 damage, and it summoned between 2 to 4 imps. If you reversed it, and it had 2 damage summon two, uh, 4 imps, four, 4 damage summon 2 imps, and 3 summon 3, it would be balanced. Uh, this is that kind of idea. As for 5 mana, it deals 3 damage and summons 3 1 1 terror daxes, which are beasts. There's a lot of beasts. And this card could have been 4 mana, is all I'm saying. It still has synergy with Knife Juggler and Dark Shark Councilman, but eh, I don't like it. 5 mana is a little bit too much. And here's an even bigger beast, the Ravenous Terror Dax. Let's scroll down a little so you can see his cute face. 4-4 uh, four, four minion with a... Uh, 4-4 four, four minion for 4 is not great. But he comes with a battle cry. Battle cry. Destroyed a friendly minion to adapt twice. And two adapts can make this guy really strong. Like, make him a 4-7 that can't be targeted by spells. Or a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. A 5-5 five, five taunt. There's a lot of different things he can be. Even the okay combinations are really strong for 4-mana. Or you get a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. He needs food from your side of the field, though. So uh, the best targets are 1-1 one, one tokens, possessed villager, or eggs. Runic Egg, and now the neutral 3-drop egg, which you'll see eventually. Uh, it's basically an Arubian Egg. You'll see it when we get to the neutral cards. This card is strong, but this card zoo may not have room for him or his needed support. Whether this prompts another style of Warlock, one that's not discard-based, I don't know. But there's a possibility, and that's fun to think about. And finally, Tar Lurker. All the Tar cards are taunts, with very high stats for their cost on the opponent's turn, and on your turn they lose a lot of attack. So they wall better than they trade. This one alternates between a 4-7 and a 1-7 for 5 mana. It doesn't really seem too powerful. This one in particular, the other ones seem really strong. But it can protect a threatening minion. People may find use, to, uh, people may find use for it, for sure. Final thoughts on Warlock. Discard. With the loss of Reno, and no great cards for Handlock to revive those uh, Handlock experiments, refining the discard lock is going to be Warlock's main identity this expansion. I could see there being a few different speeds, like an all-out aggro deck with Clutch Mother and no quest. The reason I say that is because you will definitely get the portal after turn 5, and a lot of times aggro discard lock really decided whether they won or lost the game by turn 5, so you might not need it. Uh, you do lose a little bit of early game with no Dark Peddler, no Imp Gang Boss, so I could see a mid-range deck with both of the legendaries in it, or a slower deck that aims to stall out the game to get full portal value, which is nearly infinite. I look forward to seeing what people come up with this. Uh, Non-discard zoo might be fun with Ravenous Terror, Terror Dax, as I was talking about, but the loss of Dark Paddler and Imp Gang Boss is going to hurt that deck a lot more than Discard Lock. And last but certainly not least, the swarthy scourge of the current ladder, Pirate Warrior, I mean, Warrior. Their quest, and honestly every card, uh, push the class in a very different direction from I'm in charge now! Ba, 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 ba. That thing has been in my... That jingle has been in my head for the longest time. I, uh, eh. uh, so, quest is Fire Plume's Heart. The objective is to play seven taunt minions. Yes, Blizzard is continuing to push Taunt Warrior. And the result is Sulfurus. 
a 3 mana 4-2 weapon, which is an okay weapon, but the battle cry is the real deal. Battle cry, your hero power becomes deal 8 damage to a random enemy. Your hero power is now, basically, Ragnaros is famous, DIE INSECT! I mean, not basically, it is. This is really powerful, and the weapon's low cost guarantees you'll have some instex to squash right when you play this card. It also has some excellent synergy with Auction Master Beardo, giving you multiple hero powers in one turn, which could give you, like, game-winning tempo swings. It's a shame that the other cards with the same kind of effect, multiple hero powers and such, are rotating out of standard as this is introduced. It might have been on purpose. I think we've all rolled our eyes at Taunt Warrior, but like with Dragon Priest, if, B if Blizzard keeps pushing a deck type, it will be good eventually. I'm looking at you, Beast Druid, shape up. Uh, I'll give this one a chance, by which I mean I'll be playing Rogue, but someone else will try it. The Giant Ping is certainly a potent Control Warrior tool, and enough reason to give this deck a shot. Next up is another cool card, King Mosh. Uh, he's a 9-mana 9-7, which isn't great as far as stats, but the battle cry, destroy all damaged minions. It's pretty cool. Like, obviously the first thing we think of is a whirlwind combo, but there's also blood to Icar. And, uh, in a rage, so that's cool. He just needs to take out one big minion to get value, and the potential of having a full board clear is great. It'll work wonders on jade boards and crystal core boards. The downside of costing 9 is that he can't combo well with Wild Pyro or Ravaging Ghoul, but that was definitely on purpose. Uh, he was also drawn by Cur- He also gets drawn by Curator reliably if he's one of the only beasts in your deck, so that's cool. I like it. Someone will find a build for him, I hope. Next is Explore Ungoro, one of the memeier cards of this expansion. All of your draws get replaced with 1 mana Discover spells. Choose your path. Discover a card. Not a card in your deck like the Tavern Brawl. A card. So, basically, you'll be playing Arena, where every card costs one more, but an Arena deck where you pick the cards as they're needed, but, once again, ramped down. The fact that each Discover is a mana-costing spell, well, I, I just said that, it's gonna slow you down, but this card is not meant to be a top-tier card. Explore Ungoro is for fun! Make a fun deck with this sometime. Uh, note, it does affect the deck, but not the hand. So Gajazan Auctioneer and yogg -Saron do get to go ham with their effects if they're drawn beforehand. Still not good, though. Next up, Sudden Genesis, which I also think is not good. Uh, summon copies of your damaged minions. Aside from the YouTube-worthy uh, play of quadrupling down on an injured Gromash, which is awesome, I can't think of an instance that this generates enough consistent value to live up to the giant cost without trying to make a deck full of heavy minions, which is basically like an Astral Druid without Astral in Warrior. Eh. Sorry guys, that comparison was mediocre, and so is this card, so yeah, suck it, Sudden Genesis. Next is a card with some potential, Cornered Sentry. Like Dirty Rats, this card is a taunt for two, with a negative battle cry. Summon three 1-1 one, one Raptors for your opponent. Now, I had a train of thought, like, I had stages of thought with this. First I thought, it's a two mana 2-3 two, taunt. Eh. Then I thought, oh, Whirlwind with it. It's a 2-5. Then I thought, oh, it activates second rate bruiser. And then I thought, oh, it activates mind control tech. And now I kind of like it, kind of. It's definitely not meant to be a two drop, and it's interesting in control decks, like Dirty Rat in both ways. It's also the spiritual successor to the Jurassic World meme. And that makes me smile. Next is Direhorn Hatchling. It is a five mana, three six taunt beast. Death Rattle, summon a six, uh, shuffle a 6-9 Direhorn with Taunt into your deck. Direhorn Matriarch. Look at that mama. She's strong. 5 mana 6-9 Taunt. That's ridiculous. So, uh, in Control Warrior, you actually have a good shot at drawing this. It's kind of like that Hunter Dinosaur, except you will more reliably get the big guy. So, uh, yeah, this card could actually see play. The original body is kind of disappointing, though. Beast Tag doesn't make it any better in my mind. I guess you could curate out this one, too. And you could actually curate out the big one, but you would have to not be running King Mosh. There'd be specific builds for both of them. I, I see it being pretty good. Molten Blade. That's another maybe kind of card. Each turn this is in your hand, transform it, transform it into a new weapon. And uh, Blizzard has confirmed the weapons can be from another class. So imagine that upgraded Doomhammer pounding away. Well, actually, don't. You probably won't run this in a deck that you're running Upgrade in. The RNG is a little bit more controlled than Zer uh, Shifter Zerus, because there are fewer weapons than minions, obviously. 
but I'll still have to see it in action before li liking this card. I trusted Shifter's Eris, so I've been hurt before. Now, Ironhide is a card. Gain 5 armor, 1 mana. Good with Shield Slam. Doesn't do that much else, and there's other cards to deal with Pirate Warrior. Next! Uh, let's see. Ornery Dire Horn. It's a pretty cool use of Adapt. Uh, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five beast. Taunt. Battle Cry. Adapt. Uh, you could give it an, you could make it a 5-8 taunt for 6. You could make it a 5-5 five, five divine shield for 6. You could make it spellproof versus mage. Or give it poisonous versus a deathwing. I don't know if it'll be good, but it is a taunt. It does have a lot of options, and it is another option for clearing the quest. Another option for clearing the quest, they're just throwing taunts at this class. Uh, Tar Lord. This is the largest of the Tar minions. This one is for 7 mana. If you wanted to play a taunt from 5 to 6 to 7, you can do that. So, uh, 7 mana taunt, 111. On the opponent's turn, it is a 511. Half the time, that is more stats than an Ancient of War, which is awesome. If you're stalling for rag hero power, who cares if this dude can't hit face that hard? Well, actually, you'll probably start caring if rag keeps going face, and then your measly one attack can't set up lethal, and then you start losing the board, and... Well, let's not think about that. This is a cool card. It might see play in the quest deck. Might. So, uh, my thoughts on Warrior. The quest is cool. Not, like, as overwhelmingly powerful, or as obviously powerful as the other quest decks, but it seems cool. And it gives a nice... It gives a nice endgame condition for Control Warrior, other than just running them out of a deck. And some of the new taunts they've added are really, really powerful. And there's some... I mean, it gave some nice tools to Control Warrior, even ones who didn't go the quest route. But it seems like th it's this or Pirates. Dragon Warrior's pretty much gone, since Alexstrasza's Champion, Fierce Monkey, and basically all of the cool dragon cards are moving to Wild. Uh, since there are more counters to Pirate Warrior now, Tar card, the new Ooze card, the Priest quest, the Paladin buff, that crab that actually eats the pirates, uh, most, of, most of those tools are neutral too, and therefore available to everyone. So Pirate Warrior is going to have a tougher time. And Warrior in general, if it can't, like, if it can't latch on to Pirate Warrior for another season, or find some interesting control build, it's going to, if it doesn't find a good deck somewhere, it's going to die off as a class. After all we've been through though, that might be okay. I, I'm really biased. I don't like Pirate Warrior. So, uh, yeah, and that's the end of the classes. My next video will be about neutral cards and uh, vague, opinionated spe vague opinionated speculation on what the meta will be like this coming Thursday onward. If you found any synergies I didn't discuss, or have other opinions on the cards, or you just liked me covering Hearthstone, or showing my face, or any of this, let me know in the comments, and share with any friends who would be interested in a video like this. I'm doing something different, and I would really appreciate some validation. Uh, anyway, that's it until the next video. I hope you look forward to it. Bye!